Wednesday, January 31st, 2024. The Lord is the ultimate judge. Judges 11, verse 1 to 28, key verse 27b. Let the Lord, the judge, decide the dispute this day between the Israelites and the Ammonites. Judges 11, verse 1 to 28, NIV. Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty warrior. His father was Gilead. His mother was a prostitute. Gilead's wife also bore him sons, and when they were grown up, they drove Jephthah away. You are not going to get any inheritance in our family, they said, because you are the son of another woman. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and settled in the land of Tob, where a gang of scoundrels gathered around him and followed him. Sometime later, when the Ammonites were fighting against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah from the land of Tob. Come, they said, be our commander, so we can fight the Ammonites. Jephthah said to them, Didn't you hate me and drive me from my father's house? Why do you come to me now, when you are in trouble? The elders of Gilead said to him, Nevertheless, we are turning to you now. Come with us to fight the Ammonites and you will be head over all of us who live in Gilead. Jephthah answered, Suppose you take me back to fight the Ammonites, and the Lord gives them to me. Will I really be your head? The elders of Gilead replied, The Lord is our witness. We will certainly do as you say. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and commander over them. And he repeated all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. Then Jephthah sent messengers to the Ammonite king with the question, What do you have against me that you have attacked my country? The king of the Ammonites answered Jephthah's messengers, When Israel came up out of Egypt, they took away my land from the Arnon to the Jabbok, all the way to the Jordan. Now give it back peacefully. Jephthah sent back messengers to the Ammonite king, saying, This is what Jephthah says. Israel did not take the land of Moab or the land of the Ammonites. But when they came up out of Egypt, Israel went through the wilderness to the Red Sea and on to Kadesh. Then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom, saying, Give us permission to go through your country. But the king of Edom would not listen. They sent also to the king of Moab, and he refused. So Israel stayed at Kadesh. Next, they traveled through the wilderness, skirted the lands of Edom and Moab, passed along the eastern side of the country of Moab, and camped on the other side of the Arnon. They did not enter the territory of Moab, for the Arnon was its border. Then Israel sent messengers to Sihon, king of the Amorites, who ruled in Heshbon, and said to him, Let us pass through your country to our own place. Sihon, however, did not trust Israel to pass through his territory. He mustered all his troops and encamped at Jahaz and fought with Israel. Then the Lord, the God of Israel, gave Sihon and his whole army into Israel's hands and they defeated them. Israel took over all the land of the Amorites who lived in that country, capturing all of it from the Arnon to the Jabbok and from the desert to the Jordan. Now since the Lord, the God of Israel, has driven the Amorites out before his people Israel, what right have you to take it over? Will you not take what your God Chemosh gives you? Likewise, Whatever the Lord our God has given us, we will possess. Are you any better than Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever quarrel with Israel or fight with them? For three hundred years, Israel occupied Heshbon, Eror, the surrounding settlements, and all the towns along the Arnon. Why didn't you take them during that time? I have not wronged you. 
but you are doing me wrong by waging war against me. Let the Lord, the judge, decide the dispute this day between the Israelites and the Ammonites. The king of Ammon, however, paid no attention to the message Jephthah sent him. Daily Bread First, God uses Jephthah as a leader. Jephthah was initially rejected because he was the son of a prostitute. He could have decided that his fate was set and there was nothing significant he could do with his life because of his background. But later, he was appointed as a judge and chosen to lead the Israelites against the Ammonites. Our background and upbringing don't impact God's ability to use us. It doesn't matter if we are rich or poor, with educated or uneducated parents, even if we were from a Christian household or not. God doesn't look at who we were or where we came from. He looks at the heart. Do you have faith that God can use you? Are you boldly making yourself available to God? According to our faith and commitment, God will use us. Second, let the Lord, the judge, decide the dispute. Jephthah was a strong warrior, but his greater strength was that he was tactful. Instead of rushing into a war, he wisely and diplomatically tried handling the conflict with the Ammonites. Verse 27 gives us some insight into why he didn't react emotionally or impulsively. Jephthah knew God was the ultimate judge. When we recognize God's authority in our life, we make wiser decisions. As leaders, we are not just responsible for those we lead. We are also accountable to God. That's why we need to take our behavior and decisions seriously. As Bible teachers, shepherds, and disciples, we need to think wisely and respond tactfully. Remembering God's authority in our life is the best way to make sure we lead others correctly. Prayer Lord, help me to recognize my worth and potential in your eyes, regardless of my background or circumstances. Please also teach me to lead with wisdom, relying on you for guidance. One word, I'm accountable to God for my spiritual leadership.